Hi, I'm Bill Sullivan and I'm author of 21 different books and here at my virtual booth for the Wild Arts Festival I picked out three of my favorites. People ask me what's new? Well, actually there's a lot that's new this year and this may look familiar. The guide to all the hiking trails near Portland uh, within a two-hour drive, but it's completely revised this year. And that's because there were fires in the gorge and there's pandemic going on and people need new trails uh, where you can get away from the crowds. So I've got new trails here, Lost Lake and Mount St. Helens and uh, Punchbowl Falls, not very well known, the less known one out by Hood River. And you can start right in Portland where they've got a new bridge over the Burnside uh, street there on the uh, Wildwood Trail, and that makes a nice destination. It's built by Ed Carpenter, a Portland artist. And uh, another one that's very close to town is uh, Steigerwald Lake. This is a wildlife refuge in Washougal, and they're spending millions of dollars to open up the dikes there. You can take a look at what's going on and see some interesting birds. Here's one at Mount St. Helens. It's uh, a hike along a river that goes to a lake that vanished 10 years ago when an ash flow from the volcano uh, filled that whole basin. Uh, these are all hikes that you can do with uh, no crowds, no permits, no fees, no fires, none of those problems. Um, and then at the back of the book, well, here's a couple right nearby too, Punchbowl Falls that I mentioned out by Hood River and uh, the Mosier Plateau. If you want to a Columbia Gorge hike for the wildflowers in spring that's better than Dog Mountain and easier and doesn't have permits or crowds, this is your bet. It's open right now. Uh, and then at the back of the book, I've added 16 pages. And so it's got all the hikes that I removed from previous editions. So there's actually 200 hikes. And these now have photos and maps. So you can do the ones at the back of the book as well. Does it have the changes since the September wildflowers, uh, wildfire, wildfires? Uh, no, uh, that did impact uh, the Clackamas River, Olali Lake. Um, those hikes are not doable, but uh, uh, Bull of the Woods, Bagby, Table Mountain, uh, those are all still there, lots and lots. And the really important thing in times of pandemic is social distancing. And that's why it's so important to have new hikes in the area and this brand new fifth edition of the local hiking guide uh, just came out and has lots of good ideas. Then this one is sort of your beautiful coffee table picture book all in color of my favorite hikes throughout the whole state. And this one's arranged by month. So every month of the year I recommend half a dozen appropriate things to do in that season. So you miss the wildflowers, you get the, <laughs> miss the wild, you miss the <laughs> you get there for the wildflowers, but you miss the mosquitoes. And, uh, and they're based on the outdoor columns. I've been writing for the newspapers in Salem and Eugene for 20 years. You probably haven't seen those. Uh, so they're all stories. And it's a good way to inspire you to get out and do something appropriate every month of the year. Interesting stories, even in winter, you could rent this fire lookout. Uh, and they're, it's also just a gorgeous book. And then my latest uh, historical novel, I've done uh, almost a dozen novels, is about the Danish Vikings. And people say, is it about hiking? I say, no, Vikings. My wife's background is Danish. And uh, she and I speak the language and uh, are interested in the actual Viking age. And so each of these books, and this is the second I've done, is based on the actual uh, excavation of a real Viking ship. And this one was found in Denmark uh, during World War II. And it uh, apparently belonged to Harold Bluetooth. And Bluetooth is not merely a wireless technology. He was the Viking king of Denmark who conquered England because the English king had murdered his daughter. Um, and in this book, we have uh, alternating chapters uh, with illustrations done by my daughter of actual artifacts found in these excavations. Uh, and the uh, chapters alternate between the archeologists 
who in World War II, Hitler had funded a lot of these uh, excavations. He was interested in Norse mythology, but he also wanted to persecute the Jews. And there were Jews on these archaeological teams. That becomes part of the story, too, as they, uh, because Denmark was the only country occupied by the Nazis that had no Holocaust. They rescued their Jews, including Niels Bohr, the physicist who went on to help the United States end the war with uh, nuclear weapons. And so there's two timelines here. You learn a lot about the real Viking Age and also Denmark's role in World War II uh, and the ex excavations there. So lots of variety here. You want to take a hike? This is the book for you. It's got the latest stuff. Uh, Oregon Favorites is just gorgeous. It's some of the prettiest places, all in color. And then this is just a fun read. And if you haven't read the first one in this set I've done, it's called The Ship in the Hill about the Norwegian Vikings. It doesn't matter. This is a standalone one about the Danish Vikings, the middle of the Viking Age. And I'm working on a third one about the Swedish Vikings. Give me a little time. It takes a while. I'm always doing these hikes. So anyway, enjoy the Wild Arts Festival. Thanks for coming by. If you'd like me to autograph one of these books, we can autograph a nameplate, slip it in, and you can pick it up. So happy holidays. Thanks for coming by.